Today, we're talking about the Scaniverse. It's janky, it's incomplete, it's a work in progress, it's in beta, and if put to the right use, it is one of the coolest, most tangible experiences that you can have on the MetaQuest 3. <laughs> Scaniverse is an app on iOS and Android. Previously, an Apple phone was the only thing that you could use to scan an object and turn it into a, a, a mesh, and that was done with LiDAR. And that's still the case with this app if you're on an iPhone. But if you're on Android, now they can use this photo telemetry to kind of artificially get that same result. And so now, using your Android phone, which in my case, I think a lot of us were on Samsung, maybe? You can scan an object, a place, a location, a building, a person, and create a beautiful, if slightly incomplete, model to then view on your phone, in an app, on the browser, or in your MetaQuest 3 headset. So starting at the beginning, the way this app works, you have to create an account either using Apple or Google. Then you have access to the map, the world, where anyone who's taken this scan data and published it, called a splat, you can then access it. And so perusing the planet, you can see all these different locations that people have scanned, and you can visit them either on your phone or in the MetaQuest 3. You simply hit the plus button and you begin rotating slowly around an object. If you're gathering data for a model, then you would go around that model. But if you're getting data on a room that you're in, then you would turn 360 degrees and slowly gather that scan data from the room. You wanna go extra slow. They suggest that it should take like two to three minutes, I think, to get a proper scan. But once you've done it, you can compile it and process it. That can take up to five to 10 minutes even, depending on if you do a second enhancement or just how complicated the scan is. But once it's done, it's yours and you can publish it to the map, to the world, or you can keep it for yourself, which is where this special thing comes in. Now, when scanning to the world, you cannot publish pictures of your apartment. You cannot publish pictures of faces of private property, mainly because it's geotagged and you don't want weirdos showing up. So in that situation, when you explore the world, you're only gonna find churches, statues, parks. For instance, I was traveling uh, the Nevada-Utah state line the other day, and then I took this scan of a tree that I thought was interesting enough. Nothing about it really popped out, but I wanted to give this app a try outdoors, and this was the result. When it creates this scan, it does it by using these pixelated dots, and it takes anything on the periphery and builds it into this Gaussian blur. So that at a glance from a distance, things can look very photorealistic. This is some footage I took of my two boys at our dinner table the other day, and you can see that a lot of the data in their faces is, is missing, and the background is built of these low poly orbs that kind of fade into the ether. And so it's meant to get this kind of general representation of something, but in its own way, it creates this kind of almost pointillism art. And it's cool going to Norway and looking at a statue or going to a, a cathedral. The textures are photorealistic, but everything about it has this kind of artsy, diminished quality to it, fringe around the edges. And so it's, it's like you're there, but it's also like you're looking at a rough approximation of what someone once saw. So it, it's cool, it's neat, I love it. But the thing that really makes this amazing Never mind being able to explore in the quest. That's amazing. That's cool. But I think that this has a more personal application. The other day, my kids made gingerbread houses, and I took this scan of the gingerbread house. It is not a picture. It is a physical thing that I can visit. That scan of my two boys, it's something that I can visit. And so you can imagine a situation where it's someone's birthday, and they're blowing out candles, and you take just a few seconds to get a scan, and then you have that for ever. Now something like that you cannot upload to the world because faces, but it's still yours. You can export it as an OBJ or any number of files. And then you could take something like that and throw it into Tilt Brush. And then you could build this collection of memories with your family, with friends. You can imagine camping in the summer and scanning the campsite with all the trees and the fire and everyone sitting around. And so with this just now beginning, you could imagine a scenario where from now until my kids graduate, importing those files into something like Tilt Brush, where it's one file, but within it, I have this progressing 
tally of memories as they get older and I can visit them, not just look at them, but I can walk around them and see this is how tall he was. It's cool going to a park. It's cool going to a cathedral. But I think that the magic in this lies with the fact that you can just save memories. And for me personally, something like that Christmas morning, it's going to be magic. Now let's talk about its limitations. You can scan anything, all these objects with iOS or Android, and you can upload it to the map iOS or Android. But the way that you experience it in VR, right now, it's a web-based feature. And so you would have to go to a web browser and it says, enter VR, done, you're in. And so while I wish there was a physical app on the headset, it's not there yet. And for what it's worth, they are talking about this being in beta and finally bringing a physical app in 2025. And I think that will resolve some of the issues I'm about to bring up, such as the fact that you cannot sync to your headset within the VR app online without an iOS device. You can upload from your phone just fine, but accessing it in VR, stuff that you have not uploaded to the map, that is only accessible through iOS. So if you wanna scan your backyard and publicly upload it, there's nothing stopping you. And then you'd still be able to visit it in VR. But it is a bummer that right now you have to have an Apple device to access these personal locations and files that you haven't uploaded to the map, but that you want to explore and share in VR. And the workaround for that for me was I have friends with an Apple device. And so I had them sign in under my info. I connected the headset by communicating with them and giving them the code, which the VR app wants you to input. And then from my phone, I just text the, the files that I want to see to that other person. They click it, it imports into that library, and then I have access in VR. I will say that even though I have my device and I'm logged in, those scans are physically on the phone. She didn't have access to it until I sent it to her. So that is another one of those limitations. I think all of this will be resolved in 2025. It all feels very kind of janky the way we have to go about it, but the experience I think is gonna be pretty cool. Right now, you can't really bring people in with you into a room. I couldn't scan this room right now and invite someone in and have them look at how I hung the new TV. I cannot do that but it is a cool piece of tech that is severely underbaked right now. But I could see an update in 2025, I hope, brings with it some of that extra functionality. I'm putting a link for the Android app down below, Scaniverse, and then online within the headset to access that VR. You just go to the browser and type in into the Scaniverse. Just wanted to take some time and share this because I think it's amazing and I hope you guys check it out. Let me know what you think down below. Thank you for being here. Please subscribe and like this video. It helps with the algorithm, gets me more exposure and I could really use it. As a reminder, down below, I have links for the MetaQuest 3 and 3S and through the month of December, when you use that link, you'll get $60 Quest cash to spend on all the games you want. Beyond December, it would get you $30 Quest cash and it's just a way of supporting my channel. Thanks again. You're all amazing. Godspeed. Thank you.